with beer. Two, let's go. Shot, 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 shot. Everybody, shot, 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 shot. Everybody, welcome to another episode of Catch with Beard. We're not going to talk about shots. We're going to be talking about Japanese food culture. Food culture. The yummy, yummy in my tummy. The what's going on? With this cultural, like, not appropriation. Mm. Oishi is a word that you definitely want to yeah. know if you come to Japan, because oishi means uh, delicious. Exactly. And umai. umai. That one too. They use that one a lot. Yeah. Not to confuse with umami, a new flavor that uh, that did get discovered in Japan. Pardon me. Umami. Sweet, sour, salty, and then their new type is oh, umami. Oh, I see. All right. Very good. Umami. So You're, That was unexpected. You, Lady Beer's brain blew a casket. when you, I was like, what? Wait, what? Yeah, yeah, umami is like a new, like, sweet, sour, salty umami. Umami is like that satisfi- satisfying thing that you apparently get out of certain foods that have umami in them. Conveniently, you can say umami when you eat it. <laughs> I've never ever seen anyone do that. So you you've never mentioned your mother that, from deliciousness. You've never ooh, appealed to ooh, your dear mommy. mother. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Yeah. I did not see that coming. Oh, either. there we go. Was, ah. This worked out perfectly. Um, Fresh Kathy Cat, we live in culture. Japan. We eat in Japan. It's uh, what are you reckon about eating in Japan versus eating in Germany? Um, well. First of all, I had very different expectations when I came to Japan. Okay. I had absolutely none. Because at that point in time, I was I was leaving Germany for the first time. I came here as an exchange student and I thought I I had it all, to be honest. You know, we have different restaurants in Germany. So I thought I have I had everything. I've tried, you know, different food from different culture. Mm. I've tried spicy. I tried spe- sweet. At that point in time, I thought this is everything. That's it. I think I've experienced everything. I thought so. And then I came to Japan and realized, wow. There is a whole new world of flavors, mm. of preparing food, mm. of thinking of food, of raising the food. Of treating the food like a kind of a deity in some regards. Oh, yeah, for sure. And that's why some food, for example, they put so much attention into it that they pick like by hand every day something mm. to make it extra tasty. Mm. Or they, they massage the cows and have them drink beer. Or they raise fruit in a way that one little fruit thing is like $100. Yeah, they have a choir come and sing to the street. Strawberries and yes. It's making everything just so much more tasty. Japan has the biggest foodie culture I have ever heard. It's of. remarkable, even more so than the French. Mm. When I got the script for this episode, I was like, what about the French? They have very nice food too. But mm. no, nah, Japan kicks their asses. And they are they keep reinventing and changing things. So mm. if there's something good abroad, they pick it and they make it better. It's almost religious, I would argue, the Japanese food experience. It's like, there is this one, they, I think they love eating, they love food so much that they're just like, I love this, how can I make it even better? Mm, how can I, yeah, how can I even mm, make indulge in the experience even more? Mm. What are the big differences in food culture between Australia and Japan? Dude, Australia doesn't, we don't, I don't know if we really have a cuisine, do we? I don't think we have cuisine as such. Like Australian food is like, I don't know, it's like we think of a, Meat pie is the only Australian food I can really think of is damper, which is just dough. Because the settlers used to eat that. It was dough. just yeah, just make bread, but you don't put any yeast in, so it doesn't rise. It's just got dough because you put it in your um your backpack, and uh, it's easy to yeah you know, transport with while you're hiking. Yeah, pretty much around yeah. Australia. Uh, uh, you're not really selling the stuff. Aussies right now. listening. Do we have cuisine? I don't think we have cuisine. Do we? <laughs> I don't think we do. I when I think of Australian food, I'm like, I don't know, a pie? I don't know. All right. Uh, how have your eating habits or like the food you consume, has, how has that changed coming to Japan? Because you have a very strict diet. Well, yeah, I always have to eat my boring diet food. So, mm. I mean, it's, you know, not that much, to be honest. Mm. But I do notice that the quality of food in Japan, um, provided you're not going super budget, the quality of food generally is very, very good. The quality of the fish and vegetables in particular, very high in general. Mm, you mm. eat a lot of like healthy foods. No, that's general, exactly anyways. right. So pretty much wherever I am in the world, I go mm. eat the same boring diet. So therefore, but coming to Japan, there really were a lot more options, especially in terms of the fish. Lots of fish, fresh fish available all the time. Makes sense. Series of islands, eh? Mm. Yeah. What would you say when, when you have a cheat day, mm, mm-hmm. what Japanese favorite food do you have? Oh, wow. I don't know, man. It's... 
I'll eat something that just has a tiny bit of flavor, and it's I'm so used to not having any flavor. They're just the tiniest thing, just it, oh, it just fills me with awe, and then I forget what it is afterwards because it was, just, it was so spectacular that I can't have a memory of it. Oh, yeah. Wow, that that is that is respect for being able to do that. But what is interesting about Japan is. The Japanese will always bang on about regional foods, and mm. they'll you go to a, yes. some country town, mm -hmm. they'll say, "Well, this this town is very renowned for its udon noodles." Or for like things like that, they fish there. For example, they're yeah. really renowned for their mussels there. And I was always before, when I first got here, I was kind of like, "A mussel's a mussel. Like, how great can it be? Mm. A seal came from the ocean." But then you go and you eat these local delicacies, and they really are. I don't know what happens, right. but they're remarkable. Apples and aomori. I'm like, oh. it's just apples. What? What? How can it be different? It's oh. it's remarkable, isn't it? I it's don't really know. Like, oh. An angel came down from the sky and kissed the apple gently, oh. and suddenly it tastes so good. That's what it's like. And I, I shouldn't even be having apples because I'm allergic to them. Are you? <laughs> yeah. You're allergic like, to apples. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I had an apple a day every time, and after a while, it doesn't keep the doctor away. It brings the doctor because you develop oh, a nervous. So, so sorry to hear that. Yeah. Oh dear me. Not that terrible though. But yeah, the aomori apples. I could have some of those because the oh, strand. Yeah. That they were breeding was so dispatched from the German apples I used to eat that I'm not allergic to some of them. Wow, man! I mm. just this is a whole new world. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. German apples will kick your ass, but the Japan the Japanese apples are apple so genetically types, different. They're so genetically different that I'm not allergic to some of them. Jeepers creepers, mate. Yeah. So, like I said, if we brings us back to how they ritually like they change. <laughs> The apples to yeah, be the perfect the apple. It's amazing. It is There's, oh. fascinating. So if people, if you come to Japan and you're like in an area where they say, "How oh, our regional food is, food is this," go eat it. Yeah, eat it. I staunchly recommend you eat it. It will be good. Even if it's something that you wouldn't normally eat, try it because it's probably amazing. That sometimes it'd be really funny. It'll be like, "Oh, this seaweed is our regional." And it will be and you're like, good. "What are you talking about?" Try it. No, it's delicious. And you will make friends if you actually eat the regional mm, food. People mm, mm, are very mm, proud of their regional mm. food. So if you eat that, you kind of get. Good with the local. Yeah, you get a lot of brownie too. points here. Yeah, 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 definitely do. Favorite foods for me, I think the first time I came were some dishes that are very similar to something we have, but then different. Shabu shabu, for example. Oh, yes. It's like a big hot pot, but the meat is sliced so thinly thin. that it just like instantly you just swoosh it into the water and you have it and it just melts on your tongue. Oh my god. It's like four seconds in the water and it's, it's done, isn't it? It's, it's remarkable. It's done, it's beautiful. Some things it's just it is perfected. They perfected so many dishes. And um, mm. one of my other favorites is a lot of people like ramen. I like tzkimen. Those The noodles are a bit skimmin? thicker. Tzkimen, because okay. you just dip them. They like oh, dipping Oh, I see. I thought this was a type of ramen I'd never heard of. It's kind of like derived from ramen. Tzkimen is more recent than ramen. Okay. And it's just like, oh, it's like thicker kind of texture of the noodles. And the soup is also thicker, but it's just so flavorsome. <laughs> I'm getting really hungry talking about that. So that's definitely one of the things. Yeah, this episode is like. going to make you hungry, so prepare yourself. Yeah, okay, okay. we'll all be hungry by the end of this episode. We promise you that. Japan, the Japanese, love eating more than any other activity, sh surveys show. Yes. Uh, comparatively, they did a survey mm -hmm. of uh, people in various countries around the world, mm -hmm. uh, ranking their favorite things. The Japanese ranked eating as number one. Almost everyone else ranked a different activity as number one. US, UK, Spain, France, China, and Korea ranked... Um, Intimate relations. Physical intimacy as their number one. Germany surprisingly didn't. Yeah, you guys, yeah. What? Germany were the only one odds out. We're like hugging the stop hugging people is really, our number I mean, one. That's part of the package, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, but number two is there what everyone else was voting for. Yep. <laughs> for Japan, their number one is eating tasty food. Eating. Their number two is spending time with a loved one. Their number three, we're still still not there, is hugging someone, someone, which is what Germany's number one is. Their number four, we're still not at physical interview. Number four is to laugh. I'm having a giggle. And number five on the list is physical intimacy. Um, surprising set of results. That yeah, compared to. All other countries, Japan is the only country that ranks very different on that aspect. Mm. But 
having food as their number one explains a lot about their food culture and mm, their life culture they, as well. Like they Japan adores eating and mm. reveres food, food in a way that you're not allowed to leave uh you're not allowed to take food and leave it uneaten on your plate unless it's somehow gone spoiled. So, you know if you go to the the buffet mm-hmm. um there's that sign on your table saying only take oh, food. Oh, don't you waste can eat. food. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. there's a lot of and that's not a oh it's it's uh, this or that. It's like someone's worked really hard to mm. make that food, so you shouldn't waste the food. Some people come and they're like, oh, I'm supposed to leave some on the plate to show them that I'm full. No, that's a different culture. Mm-hmm. Please don't get that mixed up. Mm-hmm. Generally, you're supposed to eat all of it. Some families are very strict. If you have a bowl of rice next to your meal. A lot of families will be like, you have to eat up the rice because in every rice grain there is there are several gods in every rice grain. Really, and it's also the thought of think of the people who worked really hard to harvest that rice to make that hot rice, you know, to do all of that. So kind of as you shouldn't waste rice. Think about harvesting rice in that rice paddy. You got to spend all day bending over doing all that plucking I've, out of I've the ground, right? I just tried it once and it was very hard. Oh, so, really? Yeah, definitely. So that's a lot of How like valuing also where the food comes and also before you eat in Japan you say Itadakimasu. Exactly, which also means they're like, I, I will receive. That is a message that usually goes to the person who's made it as a mm. gratitude to the person who's who's made the food or maybe even raised the food or who's cooked for you. And it's just good manners to say itadakimasu before every meal, even if the chef can't hear you. We did that with Nick Pettis. Yeah, yeah itadakimasu. Yeah. yeah, go and watch our video with Nick Pettis. Mm. It was very good. All right, we have also a graph here showing the ranking of cities with the most starred restaurants in the ah. world's famous Michelin Guide, Michelin. published 2022-2023. And guess who number one is? Which city is number one? Tokyo! Oh, yeah. Tokyo's number one. Tokyo is said to have the largest density of cuisine in in a space and like very high quality of density mm. as well there's so many restaurants here if you're bad you're not gonna last in tokyo if you're bad if you're bad if you're bad kitchen if you're bad cuisine if your food is bad oh i see i see you're I see. not gonna last long yeah if you're not good at the food making yeah yeah, yeah, yeah you'll be out have the door a fierce competition, a competition. out there Gee, remarkable so competition. um right. where is the uh, that guy so number one is tokyo number tokyo. two number two was uh paris so now but, this makes sense. We were talking about the French yeah. earlier. They do love their food as well, the French. Mm. But mind you, they are a substantial dip from Tokyo. Like they're only 60% of Tokyo for their number of uh, Michelin restaurants. And then you thought this was over. No. Oh. Kyoto and Osaka are yep. ranked third. Yep, yep, yep. So yep, yep. that is pretty much, you know, Kyoto and Osaka are very close to each mm. other. Kyoto is kind of third and then Osaka is fourth, mm. that kind of thing. After that, it's London. So... Which means in the top five of the Michelin Guide, Japan is in there three times. Uh That shows just how good the food here is. And then after London, New York. And New York is renowned for being a food city. Mm, so... And like fusion, a lot of fusion mm. foods, right, in America. Mm, mm, mm. Like different cultures coming together. Still, Japan has three places in the top Japan five. Japan still tearing this thing up. They love food. They're very pro-food. It's mm, remarkable. Mm, mm, mm. So what do, you th- what do you think explains this This obsession with food in Japan. I think, like we mentioned it before, there is just so much of like, let's make this even better. Mm. Like this one thing that is great, let's make it greater. Mm. And I mean, <laughs> we also, there is a ranking of cities with the largest number of restaurants per area. I was oh, mentioning yep. that, the density. Yep, yep, yep. And number one is definitely Tokyo <laughs> with 148,000 582 restaurants in 2019 is probably more by now, or, or less during the panini. We don't quite no show panini. panini pandemic. But um, that is quite a lot of density. The most restaurants in a tight space. If you're bad, if you're not good, no one's going to come. There's a restaurant literally right next to you, or maybe mm-hmm. on the same in the same building, mm-hmm. just one floor higher. Mm-hmm. Number two was Seoul with 83,239. So that's almost half. That is... Uh. I mean, just to put that into your relationship, mm-hmm. that's pre- a big change. Mm-hmm. So Tokyo has by far the largest number of restaurants. Mm-hmm. So, so, you're, you're, so if you're a foodie, frankly, friends, oh, it's the yeah. place for you. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Foodie of any variety, really. Especially All a Japanese right. foodie. Also, Japan, like, like you mentioned before, people are very proud of the regional food yes. or the regional take on food. So, for example, if you're saying okonomiyaki, which is like a oh, yeah. Japanese omelette, very, very different between Hiroshima or Osaka. Mm. And if you get that confused, people get uh, personally offended. Yeah, you're very upset. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't get that wrong. Yeah, it's really, yeah. 
mm, people, uh, food is taken very seriously oh, at a yeah. visceral and emotional level. Yeah, there's almost like a, you know, you can scratch so someone's pride identity. if you say you don't like their regional food. It's part of your identity, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of it is tied into, and that's why a lot of people put also a lot of love and care towards the food that they make. But just pride. Mm, do you guys have that in Germany? Because you guys definitely had, you know, every region has its own beer and that. But every it's not has like its Japan, is it? Beer and every region has its own different type of sausage. I, okay. I know, I want to get away from the sausage culture of Germany, but it's, it's right. so true. They're delicious sausages. Yeah, I, I think that's probably one thing we'd be proud of, our but, beer and our sausages. But are you, does, in Germany, does it, does your local beer and local sausage form part of your identity in the same way it seems to for the Japanese? I guess that depends on. I think beer definitely yes. We Germans are very tied to our beer culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in 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 Berlin, the curry sausage, the currywurst, oh, yeah. is like a thing that just everyone has, <laughs> and, and people will stand in line if there's a good one. And in Bavaria, we have the the white sausage. We call them Weisswurst, <laughs> which is very very different from all the other types of sausages. Mm. And again, you can tell I come from Bavaria because I'm kind of like, no, it's very different. Like, you're supposed to eat that in the morning and you're supposed to peel that out of the skin. You're supposed to have that with a different type of mustard. So I guess it's there in a certain one. Mm. Just it's 10 times more in Japan. It really is. Mm. <laughs> it's remarkable in Japan. We don't have that at all in Australia. We don't even have our own food. How can we have regional food? <laughs> oh, no. It doesn't make any sense. Um, apart from that little dry bread that you put in your backpack. Apart from your damper. Hiking. In Adelaide, we have the Balfour's frog cake. That's the closest thing we've got. I really want to try one of those. Frog cake's so great. Curious I'm so pro frog cake. There's a thing, for example, like ozoni, which is like the soup that you have on New Year's hmm. in Japan. And New Year's has a lot of traditions in Japan. We mentioned that before. And literally, wherever you go in Japan, they have it with a different, mm. different, different style. Yeah, yeah, different, different style. Setup. And that's like, oh, no, we have it here like this. Oh, no, we have it here like that. Oops, sorry. We have it like different in all regions. And people are proud of that again. It's like, oh, no, no, that's not how we have it. Well, it's the same thing. Even if it's just an omelette, like an egg omelette, in some areas, you have it salty. In some areas, have you have it sweet. And then oh, you can sweet. say, no, I'm a sweet person. No, no, I'm a salt person. Or how do you have your, like, egg? Do you have it fried? It's like that kind of conversation. The eggs? Let's talk about eggs in Japan. Eggs in Japan. I, I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> a lot of consumption of the uncooked slash semi-cooked egg in There's Japan. There's different versions and people are very like passionate about that. There's like the, the half raw egg, the very raw egg, and <laughs> there is the fried egg. There's there's a lot of versions of that. But uh, just coming one more step back to the... Oh, sorry, that's okay. sorry. Um, it's, it's said that like the different changes or why, why there are so many differences in mm. Japan is because Japan is like very long stretch from north to south. Mm. So you get in Hokkaido and the colder regions, there's some things that will only grow there of and they course. won't grow in the south in Okinawa. I'm talking about Okinawa, no. But then of course, the other way around as well. Mm. Okinawa's got a sort of tropical stuff that you definitely won't have up in uh, Hokkaido. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, and I feel one thing though that a lot of cultures have in common, mm. the colder it is in winter... <laughs> The more alcohol seems to be consumed. Yeah, that's true. That. Yeah. <laughs> so in all yeah. the areas in Japan that get very cold, they have like a very very strong alcohol as well. <laughs> so so uh, that's some that's something for another day. Hokkaido has a very nice milk, doesn't it? Yeah, Hokkaido. I almost compare a little bit to Bavaria. Okay. They're also Hokkaido's sister city. Is uh, well, Sapporo sister city oh. is Munich. Oh, that's nice. So we have like a big German um, Maybaum tree. In the city there as well. So oh, if you go nice. to Sapporo, be sure to check that one out. If you're going to have milk in Japan, it's Hokkaido milk is the milk to have. Oh, that's there's it's not delicious. so much dairy in Japan because I think there's also not so much space to just have your cows. Yeah, and there's a lot of lactose intolerance too, is there not? Uh, possibly. I, I don't know about be. that one. And if you ever heard the word sushi, mm -hmm. you know that Japanese people love a lot of food. Raw, mm -hmm. raw, raw, uh, uh. Uh, 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 Fish without fire. Yeah, there's. Listen, listen. We in the Western world, we have an image of sushi being the fish on the rice, the raw fish on the rice. But actually, there are all kinds of things can be eaten raw. I'm. I was surprised how many things are eaten raw here, to be honest. And some things first shocked me. Example. The raw egg in Germany. Uh, you eat raw egg, you die. That's pretty much yeah. what our parents tell us. You eat raw egg, you die. You get salmonella and you die. Mm -hmm. Salmonella. We're very serious about that. Um, in Japan, raw chicken. 
raw chicken That's... is probably another thing that everyone in the UK, like I knew some people were like, if you don't have this ch- chicken, like charcoal, mm. it's not safe to eat. That's right. In Japan, apparently raw chicken raw. safe to eat. Delicacy. What's that all about? How Delicacy. Do do Very that? expensive to eat raw chicken. I don't know how that's working out either. Mm. Horse sashimi? You have some raw horse? Raw horse, yeah. It, that was actually a, a surprising thing for me as well. Like, horse? Raw? Mm. Uh, another thing, again, that I thought hopefully I'm going to be alive on the next day was raw, almost raw uh, patty. Like a patty on a burger. And that was a restaurant in Asagaya that's proud of their... like. I have the image up until now. Minced meat is not the prettiest meat. No. Nice. So you should not have minced meat raw because it's just all kinds of stuff is mixed into it. That restaurant was specializing in it. It was literally, it was a little bit heat on the outside. In the middle of it, it was just raw. And all my Japanese friends were like, this is great. And I was just like, I'm going to hopefully be okay. Did you have day. some? I did. Was it delish? It was all right, but I was just like... I, I didn't like the risk. The the taste the risk of factor. risk on my tongue was sure. a bit too much sure, for me. I, I was worried. I was. I have a very weak stomach as well. Oh, no. And lots of Japanese food sets off my stomach because my stomach is not used to what's getting eaten here. Oh, so I was like, hopefully kid, kid. I'll be safe on the next day. And it was fine. So hang on. Is it cold in the middle? Because it's just seared on no, the outside. No, it wasn't cold, but it was it was warmish, but it wasn't okay. done. Okay. And there's a lot of dishes in Japan that you can eat. You can eat them safely it is it is you can't eat them safely i was to be honest i was scared every time oh yeah and i was always on the praying on that evening is like please let me be okay (laughs) it is very very rare for you to get something that is not okay in japan i only made that experience twice (laughs) yeah yes In, in all my years in japan i made the experience twice. once i got bad sushi that was not nice And once it it was something fish related again. So generally it's fine. It might just be the odd case out that you, for example, in an izakaya and they just had someone do this as a part-time job and they forgot to switch out the sushi. Didn't think about it, yeah. But if you go to a proper sushi place, it's rare that that happens. I don't think I've ever had that in Japan eating out. The only time I've ever had that was when it was my fault. Like I put something in the fridge and left it there too long. Fair enough. But generally I had raw horse I was fine. I had yeah, raw nice. chicken. I was fine. I had raw egg. I was fine. Actually, raw egg started to become a thing for me. Let's explain so, these eggs. Okay. The friggin' <laughs> eggs. So, uh, well, a lot of the time the Japanese are like, I'll cook something. Get a bowl of peas. Mm-hmm. Cook your peas. Yeah, your peas are hot. And then on top of the peas, raw egg on top of your peas. And the idea is your peas are hot and your egg is not. And your hot peas are meant to cook your raw egg, but not completely, just to 50%. They call it onsen tamago. It's a, it's a, it's a, an egg in the onsen, and it's half cooked. And then you eat it like that, half cooked, when you didn't even put it in the oven, just the peas were put in the oven, then the peas cooked the egg. Okay, you lost me, because I didn't know that's how onsen tamago was supposed to be made. I peas! tried to make... Eat your peas! Okay, I tried to make onsen tamago once, and you had to have like a cylindrical kind of contraption and have water at a certain temperature for a longer time. Let's be honest, we both don't quite know. Neither of us knows what's going on. Everyone's laughing right now. I thought so, onsen tamago is you cook something, just get a raw egg and stick it on top. Wrong? No, All right. everything is. Uh, it's Stop. Not peas. What's it's that? It's not a cylindrical What's that contraption. when you cook your whatever, then just dump an egg on top How of it? What's that? How do people do that half done? Poached egg in Japan. I think they're laughing all too much right now to be able to catch all right, what man. we're saying earlier. Really is... Okay, we're just I getting think, punked you know by our production team. I think team. a magical phoenix comes from the skies and sits on the eggs for a little bit too long, and that's how Japanese people get those half-done uh, eggs. Because apparently we have no idea. I've tried a couple of times. I've failed at it terribly, and apparently it doesn't include peas or, and long contraption devices. We have... That whole segment was just a disaster. <laughs> Let's it, move on. <laughs> but it, one thing is TKG, Tamago Kake Oh, yeah, tell us about you this. You just have raw egg on rice and you mix it. And it, I first wasn't a fan of it. And then I got so much into it that literally I risked it in the UK. I bought the freshest eggs I could find. I literally just got on that day into the supermarket, sent a prayer to heaven because I wanted to eat it so badly. That and a little bit of soy sauce. And it is just it's just magical. That egg just generally wraps around gently around every little rice grain and then every rice grain is just like it, 
It just tastes so good. I can't explain it. Hang on, you get a bowl of rice, you drop a raw egg on top of it, mix it all up, and eat with, it. With a little bit of soy sauce. Okay. And if it's a good, fresh egg, mm, simple things are sometimes the best. Really? If but it's a good which, quality. Which prefecture's rice would you use to make it the best? Uh, not prefecture, but Koshihikari is a very nice rice brand in Japan. Which, I can recommend Koshihikari. Which prefecture's egg would you use to make it the best? Uh, I That's one slight criticism I have. There is not much free range in Japan. It's a very oh. new concept. Oh, really? Is that Unfortunately, right? so I'm probably one of the reasons. The eggs are very fresh and literally, if they've been late in the morning, they're already in the evening in the supermarket, oh. which is good. Like that connection oh, is quite good. fast. It's not been transported for too long. But unfortunately, a lot of those eggs are unfortunately not free range. They're from the I've battery. Been going to many supermarkets going like where are your free range eggs and the staff was like we don't have yeah, that free range what are you they talking about don't Lewis? have free range it's very rare to have free range whenever I see free range I go and buy like a pile <laughs> because it's guilt free egg shopping but the average supermarket does not have free range okay well that's true yes there. yes correct um now we should talk well as well a little bit about uh odori gui when you freaking sorry, this is the thing they do. Oh, do you oh, gonna mm, that order was... yourself an octopus or an eel or some other creepy crawly squid, perhaps comes in a bowl, put in front of you to consume, and this poor um, son of a witch is still alive. It's, that's like... flapping around at you on the table, saying, "Please don't eat me." It's so fresh. I have Fourteen children. Yeah, it's it's, uh, oh, it's man. taken the sushi of the rawness to another step is when it's Bro. literally still flapping. You know how people make the joke of like the cow is still mooing because mm. your meat is so raw. The fish will literally still be flapping. The chef will prepare it so quickly that the fish is still flapping while actually the meat is already taken harshly out. Um, that is seen as a good thing in Japan. It's heavily criticized in other countries of ethical reasons. Yes. Um. Yeah. Have you eaten the old still flapping around octopus? No. And is he meant to still be flapping around in your mouth and jiggle down into your tummy? I've seen that people do that on TV. Um, it sounds to me like the old, there was an old lady who like swallowed a fly and then it wriggled and tickled and jiggled inside her when she ate the spider. That's what it sounds like to me. You got this living creature in your stomach and it's still flapping around, caressing the walls of your stomach with its tentacles. You know what I'm saying? Get yeah, it change the topic and move to the next one. All right, one. that's a thing they do, live octopus. Oh Go watch God. a video on YouTube. Oh it's pretty, pretty rough. Pretty rough. You never had that, yeah? No. I never had that. No, 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 no. No, no thank you. I, 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 I hope I don't have to do that for Man. work. Um, <laughs> there is this thing that people say Japanese food is good for your health. Yeah, they just say it. A lot good. of Japanese people say Japanese food is so healthy. It's mm. so healthy. Uh, I would like to counter at tempura. Oh, yes, that's... You know. Yes, it's vegetables, but they are... Fried. Then we have karage, which is, yes, it's chicken, but it is fried. And then we have katsu, which is like a nice mm. slab of meat, but it's also fried. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deep fried, There's ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of deep frying in Yes, yeah, tons of deep fried. They love a good deep fry. Oh, yes. And then if we go for tempura, this kakiage is literally just lots and lots of tiny veggies, but then in batter and then fried. And fried. it's just super, super fatty. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah, a lot of fat to be consumed. Uh, also, some types of ramen are very fatty. Kontonkotsu ramen, abura soba. Jiro type ramen is apparently the worst. It's like a huge pile of just carbs and oil carbs and, and oil huge portions but Fried. a lot of Japanese food food is very healthy a lot of it is like we were saying before a lot of it's very good quality vegetables mm. very good quality seafood and so forth the cows that do exist the cows mm. the very good quality cows exactly sorry I don't know where that came not from not a lot of <laughs> lamb in Japan lamb is a bit more rare yeah really do you see a sheep when was the last time you saw a sheep in Japan nah they're probably going to a farm oh I remember last time I, I saw a sheep, I was actually live streaming at a farm and you were allowed to like walk the sheep one round around the park oh, that's fun. on a little leash. That was fun. I would not eat that sheep. Poor sheep. It's probably also not tasty. It's a I very think, old sheep. I don't think I've ever seen a sheep in Japan. I think I've seen a goat. You see them at farms. Goats and sheep, you can see at farms. Okay. That's about it. Okay. I think you don't really have them as much on your plate. It's quite rare to see lamb meat in Japan. It's not as popular as other things. No, that's right. Um, actually, episode 48, we were talking about why Japanese people live longer, and they say that part of it is the food. 
lots and lots, there's less meat in the diet, or there used to be less meat mm. in the diet. Actually, there were apparently times when eating animal was forbidden in Japan in the old days. Yeah, as in eating uh, eating all animals or just eating like game? Like... Meat, meat, like meat, meat. So cows, fish was okay, fish but was cows everything else. and chickens and sheep. and Yeah, that was kind of seen as barbaric. Yeah, barbaric. Barbaric to eat barbaric meat. Barbaric Westerners <laughs> eating the cows. So only in the late 1800s, the meat-eating mm. ban was lifted oh, due, due to the to, Western influence. Yeah, due to external pressure. So that's why also um, I think in Japan there's now a really big culture of, ooh, you're allowed to have meat. Like, meat is something good. Mm. That's why vegetarianism has not really have that a big foot here in Japan because there is still the thought of like, wow, mm. you have meat is something new. It's yeah. something special. Permitted like, to be eaten. Yeah, until around 1960, the general, like, like that's when the general public began to eat meat. Before that, it was still a bit like, mm, not really a thing. So if you think about it, 1960s is when the public started eating meat. So that's, yeah. I mean... It's very recently. Yeah, very in, recently. in that way. You know, that's why still the thought is like, ooh, going for meat is like a treat. Still not part of the traditions in terms of nightly family dinners or mm. anything like that. It's like a treat. It, it's more common to have fish on your plate than having meat on your plate. Every pro wrestler, when asked, what's your favorite food, they'll say, meat. It's the first thing they say, meat. Mm, yeah, meat. meat. What do you want to eat? Meat. Meat. Niku. Um, niku, exactly. Niku. They don't specify what meat, just meat. Meat. Uh, niku. There's also Ichiju Sansai. So Japanese food that consists of two small bowls of vegetables and fish. So like three side dishes and a bowl of miso soup. So it's, or if you think, or if you look at the Japanese style breakfast, oh. A, it is warm. Yeah, true that. It is. B, you have vegetables there. Yeah. You, it's your yep, yep. breakfast, but you already have vegetables there. Or you have veggies. a salad yep, there. Yep, yep. See, there's something fried there. There might be fried fish, mm -hmm. something like that. And there mm. might be some kind of pickled dish there, some yeah. pickled items. Those are delicious, man. Mm. They are great. Or oh. some fermented items like natto oh, <laughs> or similar things. I'm getting increasingly hungry doing this episode. Oh, yeah, this, oh my gosh. If your stomach is not rumbling, we're not doing a good job here. Um, oh. Uh, so a lot of Japanese food is actually adapted from foods from other countries, like ramen. Yeah. It originally comes from... Curry, Canada. of course, the curry. We haven't even mentioned the curry yet. We haven't even mentioned the curry well, yet. Curry! There's been a big s of a scandal. India's upset. And uh, because of the Taste Atlas, best traditional dishes in the world. Traditional. They, I mean, the title of it was probably a bit wrong there. Plus, the traditional dishes in the world, 2022. And number one, they ranked... Japan's kare. Japanese curry. As the best curry. traditional dress. Let's just let's just examine that noun. Curry. curry. Let's examine that adjective. Japanese. What? I mean, India is like the origin of curry, That's so right. I can understand why people weren't so happy saying oh, best traditional upset. dishes in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Somehow the Taste Atlas put Japanese curry on place number one. After that, it's other countries' dishes. How do we tell people about the curry culture in Japan? Where, where did it come from? Why is it here? The we, curry is part of the culture here. It, it became a thing. Like, again, it's something Japan is very good at picking something up from another country and changing Japanifying it, it, Japanifying it, yeah. it uh. and then bring it out and making it absolutely tasty. There's there's some amazing, amazing curry places here in Japan. It's really but also, a lot of the time it's sweet curry. It and it's sweet and it's not as spicy. Variations. It doesn't use as many spices. It's not like Indian curry. It it's... is not. Like, it's more like a Japanese curry stew. Yeah, I don't know In a way, it You eat it on top a of a pork cutlet. Different, yeah. Pork cutlet and rice. Very, very different. Yeah, but um, Japan was in those best dishes in the world, again, on, pl on a place number 21, mm. with the tonkotsu ramen. Tonkotsu ramen. The very, very porky mm. ramen. Then 30 was the katsu. Katsu don. Yeah, so they're just having like, a slab of fried mm. meat. It's like a sh German schnitzel, mm. like a deep fried delicious. meat on top of rice. Oh. 43 was kare rice. Kare rice. So, so we brought the curry rice. back again, put also rice and this time. Again, I'm like, why is this in there twice? That I don't get quite get that. Mm. Um, the next one would be the shake nigiri sushi on 46, so just like sushi with What would be shoyu ramen? Uh, did I miss that? Oh, yeah, shoyu ramen. Number so 44. the soy sauce ramen number 44. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I missed that. That's right. Um, but yeah, that, that definitely was a bit of a talk because uh, cutlet ranked 30th. Uh, it was originated apparently from a French dish, the yeah. cutlet. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. And yeah. the dumplings ranked number 47th also. 
that was the gyoza number 47 yeah. dumplings They're originally from china actually comes from china yeah, yeah. so um that's a bit of a scandalous or food ranking there in my opinion but if you come to japan i'd say try a lot of the dishes mix it up be creative don't be shy it is hard. I'm just going to put that out there. It's hard for vegetarians and especially yep. for vegans. Yeah, yeah, very hard and for vegans. if you're not a pescatarian, meaning you don't even allow yourself to have fish, you will Got lose out on a majority of good Japanese dishes. Just, what's this number 46? We skipped over that, I think. Uh, that's the salmon sushi. Okay. Salmon sushi. Okay. So you're probably going to lose out on a lot of tastes if you can't have fish. If yeah. you you don't. You're not gonna lose out so much if you don't have like red meat. Um, but a lot of my friends had to, who were vegetarians, had to go pescatarians, meaning mm. vegetarians, but you allow yourself to have fish when they came to Japan because it's actually really hard to just find just vegetable dishes. Yeah. A lot of things are kind of cooked in that fish paste, something, something other. Is that fishy, pasty, something that gets thrown into everything? Mm. Uh, uh-uh. There's a lot of like... That was said by a man who doesn't know what he's talking about. Very clearly. Dashi, you probably mean dashi, which is like a, like a base to a lot of Japanese dishes, which mm. is kind of like a, a soup stock that uses fish. In, mm. as an ingredient mm. so there's a lot of fish in there mm. I hope when you come to Japan you'll be able to try all the foods um, you don't even have to go to a Michelin ranked restaurant to get one of the most tastiest things sometimes it's the weird back alley places yeah. that have only five seats that are the best it's yeah like, it's remarkable it's isn't it unbelievable I think I ate bear in a place like that I ate bear sashimi wow that was crazy what was that great huh. okay haven't tried bear yet yeah it's not that dissimilar from horse. Oh, was was the flavor unbearably good? Whoa! <laughs> Look out! <laughs> well, if you have in your country, if you ever tried Japanese food, then let us know which one. Or let us know what food is actually your favorite food. Let us know that in the YouTube comments. Mm, the commenters. And if you are not watching this on YouTube but listening to our wonderful voices on the podcast, then let us know on our Twitter mm-hmm. or X, as it's called now. Oh, yeah, uh, that's right. Let us know X. on the X, on the old X, on X Japan. what your favorite Japanese dish is. Is. And send us an email too, nippon at joqr.net. Uh, but generally, comments are great. <laughs> so leave us a comment on the YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Tell us what your favorite Japanese dish is mm. and why you love it so much. I want to find out what's the most popular among you wonderful people who are listening to us today. And don't forget to check out our your official YouTube channel, Cat with Beard, and our Twitter, Cat with Beard from Japan. Thank you so much for tuning in. And our socials are somewhere in the description because by now you should know them. Goodbye. <laughs> See you. Bye. Gochisou sama deshita. Gochisou sama deshita.